Welcome back aviation enthusiasts and fellow aircraft builders. This is a uh, attempted video with my cell phone because both my other cameras are uh, having problems right now. So I figured out a way to mount this in a tripod and we're gonna see how it works. But today's video is just a short tooling video on how to make joggles. Now I'm gonna provide a link in the comment section below to EAA Hints for Home Builders uh, video on how to make a joggle tool but I want to expand on it a little bit. So here in the uh, Zenith 750, so far I've only found two places where you need to make a joggle. One is for the landing light mounting bracket, and the other one is for uh, the steering rod covers that go on the firewall. Those slots there get covered uh, by one of these, and then they both have slots in them, and then there is a steering rod slide that goes up and down in between the two of them and that effectively seals off the engine compartment from the passenger compartment so the hole in the slide is very narrow or very small just big enough for the steering rod to come through and connect to the nose gear and then the wide slots in both of these pieces here allow for the rods to move back and forth and up and down freely and then this this slide cover goes up and down in between there and so you get a three layered system there but in order to accommodate this piece here, inside the mechanism, you have to put what's called a joggle in the uh, material. So you can see here, and it's, I'm having a hard time focusing on it here with the cell phone, but you can see the uh, slight joggle that this requires. This piece fits right up against the center gear channel on the firewall and then gets riveted along the flange. So. You have to put two joggles in this piece. One just abruptly ends at the end of the joggle and then the other one has a riveting flange on it so that it tucks properly up against the center gear channel here. So the way that you make a joggle is with a joggle tool and a bench vise. The easiest way to make this tool at home is with a piece of flat stock. In this case, uh, this is a piece of 1 8 inch aluminum. And the thickness of the material determines the height of the joggle. So from this lower horizontal part to this upper horizontal part, the distance in between those, the height of that, is essentially the thickness of the material that you use to make the joggle tool. And then the width of the joggle, from where the joggle starts to where the joggle ends, that is dependent upon the slot width here. So if you want a 1 8 inch by 1 8 inch, you need a 1 8 inch slot with a 1 8 inch piece of material. And that's what the firewall blueprints call for. You can see there's a 3 millimeter height on the joggle there. That's essentially 1 8 of an inch. Uh, and then on the landing light, I believe that's a uh, 1 millimeter joggle that they want there. So depending on what height of a joggle you need, you use a different thickness piece of material to accommodate that. What I've done here is I took a piece of 8 inch aluminum and I made it just long enough, I probably should have made it a little bit longer, but I made it just long enough to accommodate this 175 millimeter wide piece of galvanized steel and then I put a relief hole here at the end of it. Whatever you do, make this distance at least as long, and I would recommend longer than however long of a joggle you need to make. And all I did was cut this out on my bandsaw using the fence and made a double pass with it and then slightly deburred these edges. It's a little bit larger than one eighth of an inch. I was hoping to get a little tighter tolerance than that, but because I didn't use the, the table saw blade, it, it's a little bit wider, but that's okay. Uh, this actually will make very nice joggles, as you can see in this piece here. This was just a test piece. The way that I've laid out this part, if you'll notice on the blueprints, overall they want 75 millimeters from the end of the mounting flange with this joggle here and then this upper joggle that just terminates at the uh, at the bend line. Uh, they want this to be an overall 75 millimeters. So using a joggle tool like this, I discovered that the distance between this joggle and the start of this bend, because you can see the bend starts up here. Try to get in a little closer here, hold on. All right, so you can see the edge here goes over, joggles up, goes across, joggles down. They want the overall width to be 75 millimeters. 
Now to make a piece like this, you actually have to make it oversized and then cut it down after it's bent. So what I've determined is that from, to start with, I need about a 20 millimeter flange minimum to bend the joggle with. From bend line to bend line needs to be 55 millimeters to give me the correct spacing between the two bed lines plus the 15 millimeter flange to yield a 75 millimeter part. So the way that I've laid this out on the material is I've got a 20 millimeter flange, a 55 millimeter spacing, and a 20 millimeter flange. And what that'll do is this is the very top surface between these two bend lines here of this part. So from edge to edge on the top surface is 55 millimeters. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and cut this out. I'll set up the camera and show you how to do the joggle bends in the bench vise. And then what we'll do is end up trimming this flange down so that it's 15 millimeters from edge to edge. And then this one terminates on the very bottom, very bottom edge of the joggle. So we'll be back after that. Okay. I apologize for the mess in the background. The shop is getting a little uh, obnoxious. What I have here is that rough cut piece of material. And it's not finished yet and does not need to be until you're done uh, trimming it to size. So this is just rough cut. I haven't even deburred any edges or anything and I don't need to yet. The way to set this up is depending on how you want your joggle to work is you essentially slide this in here and in this case I want the joggle to go away from me and then flare up so you can see how this is going to when this bends. This part is going to bend down flat against this surface. This part is going to bend flat up against this surface. So because the upper edge where I've marked my lines are where my key measurements are. I need to put that flat against the piece that's going to bend it down, if that makes sense. So I'm lining this edge right here up with the very edge of the joggle tool here. Okay, and it's got to go up just a little bit. I'm putting that right on the corner, right there. I'll do the same thing on this side. Make sure it doesn't move. And then with this galvanized steel, you can bend it by hand pretty easily. So what I like to do is take and make sure once I've got everything lined up properly, I'll actually bend it down against the, against the tool and hopefully it won't move. It'll have a tendency, this piece here will flex upward against the pressure of it, so you may have to adjust down here a little bit. But once you've got it pinched in your hand like that, it shouldn't go anywhere. And now we'll take it and we'll put the short side in the vise. And I want to make sure that I'm clamping both edges down in the vise jaws as evenly as possible. And holding it in position with my hand, I'll just get it until the vise bites down. And I didn't clamp that straight, but here we go. So I'll tighten that down. You don't want to over tighten it too much because you don't want to break the vise. But I'll get that clamped down and then I'll slide it out and do the rest of it because this is actually too long for the vise jaws. Clamp it down and see how we did. So take that out of the joggle tool and you'll see you've got a nice 1 8 inch joggle in that part. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> this is before I even cut the slots or anything like that. I'll do that all later. So this bent pretty, pretty darn perfectly across the bend line. Sorry for the glare. Pretty darn perfectly. It's maybe a little tiny bit off over here, but that's perfectly acceptable for a plans built part, but it's not even a millimeter off at this point. So now we've got to do the other side and it's kind of the same thing, but you want to make sure that you get the joggle going in the right direction. So now on this side, we want this flange to bend down and over. So, we essentially need to, again, put the joggle tool right on the edge there and there, and then that's going to bend the flange away from us, like that. And I'm going to pull that down nice and tight, make sure that joggle line didn't slip, get that lined up, and then again, short side goes down into the vise. Like so. Make it nice and tight. Be 
because my vice jaws have that groove in the center of them all the way down the length. I have to be careful with that. But So pull that out. And now we've got a cover with a nice joggle in it. So to finish this part off, we just simply measure 15 millimeters over from this edge here to the edge and trim it that way. And then this side gets trimmed all the way down the edge of the joggle there. This whole flange comes off. You just want the joggle end on there. That's what will bump up against the center nose gear channel. In my firewall video, I will actually explain why I don't mark the holes or the slots on this yet because there's some final locating and positioning you have to do and um, things like that. But this is how you get the base part and then you can figure out where to put your slot after that and do the finish work on that. But that's essentially how you do a very simple joggle and uh, it turns out really nice. Thanks for watching that tooling tip and uh, we'll see you next time. That's all for this video. Be sure to like, comment, or subscribe and let me know if you have any requests for future video content. As always, thanks for watching and good luck with your projects.